The Kawasaki Vulcan 650 is a great beginner's bike, simply for the fact there's adequate power, yet it's not enough to lift the front end or spin out the back wheel accidentally. There's great brakes, the clutch and brake levers are adjustable, the foot pegs have three adjustment settings, it comes with two different handlebar options in the factory and three different seat options, so it's pretty much capable of fitting any rider from 5 foot to 7 foot. Now that we've talked about the ergonomics, let's get it out on the road to see how it feels. So, what's the bike like to live with on the road? First impressions can be everything and very good with this bike. Set up just right for my size, just handlebars perfect, foot pegs perfect, seats nice and comfy, brakes, back brakes, yeah, fairly decent, front brakes, yeah, very good. Of course, that ABS, great help. It has guts down low, some people say it hasn't got guts down low, but it just depends what you're all used to. I think it's not going to scare you, but it will get you where you want to go, as quick as you want to go. Just try it, some of these bumps here, it's very nice in the bumps. As I know I have experience of one or two hard bumps on it and it just, it's a little unforgiving, just obviously standard rear shock and it's going to be like that unless you upgrade but that could cost you another four or five hundred pounds you know, one finger brakes in this bike it's not comfortable for a long run now no vibration through the bars at all at these lower speeds I'm not getting hit by any wind I know once you get up to around about 70 you do start to feel it but this face the bike's like easy, you're not going to be on the, the motorway or the dual carriage all the time, you're going to be out there on the open road and the twisty stuff, having a bit of fun. Let's open her up a little bit, see what she's like. Reasonable amount of power. It is a cruiser after all. It seems to be very easy to live with this bike. The ergonomics are brilliant. This foot bikes are so relaxing. Now of course this being based more towards or leaning more towards beginners or intermediate riders it just doesn't offer the same thrills as a big displacement Harley or Suzuki or Yamaha but that's not what this bike's all about, this bike's just anyone can get on it and go and have some fun, like can cruise about there one handed, it's really easy, comfortable and enjoyable. It's not a ton of power but enough, it leans really well and it's, it's a lot lighter than the bigger bikes too, you obviously wouldn't want to be starting off on a, a V-Rod or a Marauder or something like that, or sorry, a M109 or a Yamaha V-Max, just a bit too much. That's pulling pretty good there, up that hill. A real tight bend here, I had some real tight bends yesterday. You can scrape the foot pegs if you want, but it, does, it shouldn't really happen unless you're just going a wee bit too far. But Still and all, great bike, be very easy to live with. I think the service interval on these is around about 7,500 miles, so it gives you plenty of cruising. Most people wouldn't do that in a year anyway. Uh, I don't know if I was saying about the power of this bike, it's making roughly 61 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. I think it's 46 pound foot of torque. Woo! Bumps. It is the same engine as in the Ninja 650, just a different air intake and a heavier flywheel just to give it more low down grunt, just to let it right off her. Oh yeah, that definitely pulls well. As for the 
brakes, brakes I say are great, either way, just easy to balance bike, not too hard to turn in around tight spaces, like, look at that, that's barely even thinking about it, as some people say it's a sort of bike you don't really have to think about riding, it just, just happens, it's not any big inputs needed to get it going or doing whatever you want it to do, it just happens, it's just great, especially for the beginner riders, because the last thing you want to do is, I know from my own experience beginning, going around pulling out of road ends and stuff, and just the bike's really heavy or awkward to work with, it's just no fun. This bike's, it behaves pretty well, nice thin enough tires that just, you don't have to force it too hard with the steering, you know, it's reliable, it's detuned version of another engine, so it's literally bulletproof. Not going to have any trouble with it whatsoever. Like some of the other bikes, this engine would bother with the headers cracking and top engine mounts going, but not in this bike at all. Everything's 100%, no real bad reviews on this bike yet. Now some of these bikes do come with a gear indicator, this particular one doesn't for some reason. I must look into that see whether it's a feature you can turn off or on. The clocks are pretty simple, it's basically just the same out of some of the other Kawasaki 650 models. Just starter switch, kill switch over here, your horn, indicators, hazard lights, high low beam of course, and the adjustable levers. The mirrors, these are aftermarket mirrors. The original ones are pretty good. These ones are a little smaller now, just not as good a field of vision, but enough to do. Let's see if we can find some twisty stuff. Fuel economy in these bikes, you will get around about 56 to the gallon. Again, if something if you're if you're a commuter you might be worried about, but beautiful day. Beautiful view from up here. Just as something if you're worried about. But if you're just out buying it for a second bike or just something to cruise about with, uh, if you have uh, the owner of this bike has a sports bike and you just wanted something for a bit more comfort, then he's definitely made a good choice here. So not too expensive, not too hard to live with, just a great all rounder. Loves the twisty stuff too. Oh yeah, real, real comfortable. Takes it on its stride. Definitely good enough to cope with the job. No worries of that. So this bike is a real fun side to it too. Since there's no city slicker. Nice little blue gold low of the dash there when you're in the uh, in the shade. So it's be nice and clear at night. Nice clear gauges all together. Just everything's very easy to read. Switch gear is very easy to access. But this bike is designed for beginners, intermediate riders, or even advanced riders just looking something to keep for the rest of their riding days. It's so easy to live with this seat. Is that in worse car seats. I can't complain about it at all. The suspension's really handling these faster bumps well, just a little bit bubbly, but I think it's more just the, the thick cushion of the seat that I feel. But all in all, decent on the twisty stuff too. On this constant 60 mile an hour kind of driving, you do get a little bit of wind in the chest, but it's not too bad at all, it's bearable. Like no problem leaning back and forward. You know, the headlight must provide a little bit of protection to the dash, a little bit of protection to the wind blowing up past you. So just, I uh, couldn't complain about it. It's 
just uh, you know vibrations in the bars, the foot pegs or anything. Seventy there, a little bit more of a push in the chest, but not again workable. That's for a little bit of overtaking. Had a good pair. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. For anyone interested in the MPG side of things, there's a little eco light just right here. A little triangle that whenever you're cruising at the right speed, it stays on when you be uneconomical, it goes off and then goes back on again. So there we have it, the Kawasaki Vulcan S Great beginner bike or even if you're just an intermediate rider looking at a second bike just a great all rounder with easy to handle, easy to maintain, low maintenance costs the newer versions can be A2 license compatible here in the UK so definitely a bike I would recommend if you want one just go out and get one, have some fun <laughs>